we're going to look at a couple of examples of mixed factoring and identifying what type of factoring you need to do and uh, how I do it. So in the first example here, I'm looking at a situation where I've got a trinomial, so there are three terms, and I notice that the coefficient of my x squared term is 1. So that means that I can use the 72 as the number that I need to factor. And what I'm looking for is trying to find two numbers that are going to multiply together to get me 72 and add up together to get me 17. Now, 72 is a positive number, so I know I'm going to need either two negatives or two positives. Since the 17 is positive, I know I'm looking for two positive factors. Okay, so I'm trying to multiply the 72 with two positive factors. So I think about multiples uh, um, of 72, or factors of 72. So I know, for example, that 2 times 36 is 72. Now, that's not going to work because when they add, I get 38, and I don't want 38, I want 17. So I just keep trying. Try to find things that multiply together to give me 72 until I find the one that gives me the correct uh, pairing in the middle. So what else goes into 72? I know that it is 9 times 8, and if I add up 9 plus 8, I get 17, and so that's the correct pairing to give me the 17 in the middle. So the factorization right here is going to be x plus 9 and x plus 8. All right, it's always a good idea to check our answer just to make sure that it does make sense. And so if I check my answer, x times x is x squared, x times 8 is plus 8x, 9 times x is plus 9x, and 9 times 8 is plus 72. Okay, and then when those add up together, they're going to give me a 17x in the middle. All right, so we've got our answer checked. Um, just going to erase for space. That's my answer right here. And let's look at the next one. Okay, now this is a different type. It's also a trinomial, but there is a coefficient of x squared as well as the number at the end, which also has a y with it. Specifically because of this coefficient, this tells me that I can't just look at the last number like I could do in the first one. What I would like to do is first see if there's any number that I can divide them all by. Um, I don't think there is, so what we're going to do is multiply those together. So I'm going to use a calculator for this, and we're going to say that 15 times 14 is 210. Okay, so let me close that. 210. So I multiply 15 times negative 14 actually, so it should be negative 210. And I'm going to try to factor that number. Now I know that the only way to multiply to a negative number is if I have one positive and one negative. So I'm going to need one of each when I'm trying to find my two factors. Oops. Okay, one of each. I'm trying to find my two factors. Alright, and so I'm like, what goes into 210? And since it's one of each, it's going to be subtraction from a positive and a negative. So I know, for example, 21 and 10 is the one that um, pops out at me because it ends in 0, so 21 times 10. And when I subtract those, I get 11. Now, I got lucky on the first try because I wanted to get 11. So that's the right combination to get me the 11. Now, I'm going to use the grouping method on this, and so what I want to do next is say, I'm going to break this up and say this was 15x squared. Instead of writing the 11xy, I'm going to split that 11xy into a plus 21xy and a minus 10xy. So we'll say plus 21xy minus 10xy minus the 14y squared. Okay, now I'm going to use grouping, and so when I use grouping, I'm going to group the first two terms and group the last two terms and factor each group. So when I factor the first group, 15 and 21 can both be divided by 3, so I'm going to factor a 3 and an x out, and that's going to leave me with 5x plus 7y. Okay, now this is negative, and I'm going to notice that those can both be divided by 2. So I'm going to divide 2y out. When I divide by 2, I'm going to be left with 5x 
minus 7, divided a y out, so I still have a y left. Okay, now this grouping, oops, I missed my sign up right there. A negative 14 divided by a negative 2 would be a positive 7. Luckily, I noticed that because these two need to be the same, and they are. So I need to factor out the 5x plus 7y. When I take that out from the first term, it's going to leave me a 3x minus, in the second term, the 2y. So this is the factorization. And again, I could check it. And if I want to check that it's right, we're going to multiply 5x times 3x is 15x squared. 5x times negative 2y is minus 10xy. 7y times 3x is plus 21 xy, and 7y times negative 2y is minus 14y squared. A little bit blurry right there. But those do add up to 11xy, like I was supposed to get in the middle. So this does check. 15x squared plus 11y minus 14y squared. All right, so we'll get rid of our check. We got our final answer right there. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, in the next one, this one also has a coefficient. I notice it's a trinomial and it has a coefficient. So it is going to be the type where I multiply first number and last number if I want to use the grouping method. And so I'm going to use that 60, try to break that up into factors that are going to add or subtract. It's going to be subtract in this case since I have a negative. So one each and I'm going to subtract again. So one positive number and one negative number is going to give me a subtraction. And so, let's see, 60. I know that's 6 and 10. So let me do 10 minus 6. That's 4, so that's not the correct number. Um, so what else goes into 60? We could do um, 2 and 30. Well, that's not going to work either, but we can write it down. It's going to give us 28. We could do... 5 and 12. If I do 12 minus 5, I get 7. And then I can see that that's going to be the one that's going to work. I just need to switch which one's positive and which one's negative. So if it's a negative 12 and a positive 5, that's going to give me a negative 7. So that's the pairing we're going to need for this one okay, to get our negative 7. So once more on that grouping method, we're going to do 2 a squared minus 12a plus 5a minus 30. So notice that I'm keeping the 2a the same, keeping the minus 30 the same, and splitting up the negative 7a into the negative 12a plus 5a, because that's true, that does equals negative 7a. And then we're going to factor this by grouping. So the first group has 2 and a in common. I factor that out, it leaves me with a minus 6 plus the next group has a 5 in common. So when I factor that out, it leaves me a minus 6. Then I've got a minus 6's in both groups that I have left. I'm going to take a minus 6 out. It's going to leave me with 2a plus 5. Okay, so I've got this one factored. Okay, and again, that was a type that has a coefficient. It's a trinomial with a coefficient. Okay, so looking at number 4. I want to recognize what to do here. So the first thing I notice is this one is not a trinomial like the last three. It has four terms. So I'm actually going to start by grouping. When I have four terms, like I rewrote this one to have four terms, I need to group. Um, so I'm going to group right here and say that these two have a three in common. So when I take three out, I've got two plus x left. And those two, I'll say plus, they have 2y in common. So we're going to factor out the 2y there. It's going to leave me with, oh, they don't have 2 in common. There's no 2 here. Uh, I've got to fix that real quick. Um, so those two actually only have y in common. So we'll take the y out, and that's going to leave me with the 2 plus x. That looks a little better. Okay. Now 2 plus x is in common. And when I factor out the 2 plus x, it's going to leave me with a 3 plus y. Okay. Take out the 2 plus x, what's left is 3 plus y. So I've got 2 plus x times 3 plus y. Okay, that one's factored. Okay, 
Okay, and then we've got a couple more examples. Number five, there are only two terms, so it's a binomial. So the only thing that could happen here is I could either have a GCF where I could take something out of both terms, or I have a difference of squares. And that's the case right here. These are both perfect squares. 9 squared is 81, and 2 squared is 4, so I have a difference of squares. Okay, so when I have a difference of squares, it's going to factor into the square root of the first number, 9a, plus 2, to use the square root of 4. And the same thing, but 9a, this time, minus 2. Okay, so that one's factored. And that's by noticing that this is a difference of two perfect squares. Um, and so I factor into the difference of those two squares, the difference of... Um, one of them is going to be the 9a plus 2, the other one's the 9a minus 2. Okay, so you could check that. Notice that 9 times 9 is 81a squared. This one would give me a negative 18a. This one would give me the positive 18a, and those are going to cancel. And then I got my minus 4. Okay. Uh, one of the things you might want to do if you're practicing difference of squares right here is just keep yourselves a list of perfect squares so that you can identify these really easily. Like 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, uh, 3 squared is 9, etc. 4 squared is 16. So anytime you see, oops, 25, anytime you see any of these numbers, these perfect square numbers, etc., you're going to maybe think about doing a difference of squares. Okay. Alright, last one, number 6. This is again a trinomial and I want to notice that I need to uh, factor out a GCF first because there's an X in all of them and then I can divide these three numbers by looks like 8. So I'm going to divide everything by 8X to begin with. I'm factoring out an 8X and when I factor out the 8X that's going to leave me with 4X squared plus 7X minus 2. Okay. Now, this one is again a trinomial with a coefficient. So I'm going to start by multiplying those two together. I'm going to do that over here. Then I multiply those two together, I've got negative 8. And I need to get a 7. So I'm going to go 8 minus 1 is 7. Okay? So 1 positive, 1 negative will multiply to a negative 8, and they add to 7. Okay, I'm going to use that grouping method again here. So what I'm going to do first is hold on to this, just circling it and remembering that I need to put this back in on my answer in the end. But I'm going to ignore it for a minute when I do this factoring. I just don't want it to get in the way. So I've got 4x squared plus 8x minus 1x minus 2. I'm going to factor each group here. I can divide both of these by 4 and x. It's going to leave me with x plus 2 minus, that's for my minus. Um, the only thing I can divide those both by is 1. So when I divide my negative 1, I get x plus 2. Okay, So I've got x plus 2 in common. And when I take x plus 2 out from the first term, I get 4x. Second term, I get minus 1. I'm going to go back and stick my 8x right here in the front. And we're factored. Okay, so there's a couple of different strategies we need to pay attention to when I have a GCF, when I've got a number that I can divide everything by, and then I've got different strategies for trinomials depending on how many terms, um, well, tr um, trinomials have three terms, but depending on whether or not I have a coefficient. So many of these did have a coefficient, that's the more challenging type to factor. If they don't have a coefficient of x squared, then I can just take the two factors and substitute directly into the parentheses. Uh, if there are four terms, I'm going to use grouping. And if there are two terms, it's either just a GCF and we're done, or perhaps a difference of squares.